welcome back to Marissa Explains It All and Happy Halloween! Today I am filming a video that's a little bit different than my normal topic, I guess. Uh, normally I talk about makeup, obviously, but today I'm going to be talking about my paranormal experiences in honor of it being Halloween. Now, I don't want this to turn into a debate about whether or not you believe in ghosts or whether or not I should believe in ghosts because I believe in ghosts. We're just going to leave it at that. So moving on to my stories. I have a few experiences that I wanted to talk about. I don't like scary movies. I don't watch them. I, I don't like haunted houses. Um, I don't like being scared at all. And I don't understand why people like to feel scared. Um, so I am not the type of person that will seek out these things. That being said, these are things that have all happened to me without me seeking them. I wasn't like a ghost hunter. I believe in it and I'm intrigued by it, but I don't necessarily seek it out because I am a big wuss. So the first experience I would like to talk about was when I was in my teens and I was sitting at home in the house that I grew up in and the house that I grew up in is was built in 1914 and I live in Southern California so that's a really old building for the area that I live in. We don't have old buildings here. Everything here is relatively new. The way the house was was you had to, it's the, you could only enter on the side of the house so you came through a gate and we had bells on the gate so we could always hear someone coming purposefully. Then you walked up a flight of stairs to the front door and then there was a flight of stairs that went down into the backyard. And in the backyard, there was a door that you could go under the house and it were in California, we don't have basements, but it was where you could go under the house into this room and you could stand up in it, but not comfortably. Like you had to crouch like this to get into it. And it had dirt and just stuff. And we just used it for storage. Like it wasn't a room that you could actually like spend any time in. It was gross, it had spiders and like, it was just gross. And we kept a lock on that door. And in order for someone to be able to walk up the stairs and down, we would hear them because there was a window in the living room where the couch sat. And so we had a couch and a love seat in an L position. And there's a reason I'm telling you this when I get to the actual meat of the story. Um, there it, uh, were couches in the L position with windows on each, behind each couch. And so when someone walked up, first of all, they'd have to come through the gate. Anyone would have to come through the gate and ring the bells of the gate, plus the gate made noise. Like we, we knew the sound of the gate when anyone was arriving. And then you would have to walk right past the front door upstairs and then down past these windows where you were like, you know, right there not there was no space between the window and the stairs it was right there and down into the backyard and then the door was kept with a lock on it so the likelihood of someone being able to get into this room downstairs in the backyard um without us knowing it just was virtually impossible my grandmother was in town visiting and my mother and my grandmother and i were sitting so the love seats were like you know there's a love seat and a couch and so we were each sitting on both of the couch and the love seat talking. And so um, we were animatedly having a conversation, my grandmother, my mother, and I, and all of a sudden we hear this banging on the floor below our feet. And it wasn't just like a bang, bang, like a knock. It was like someone was down below us in that room that I had talked about with like a bat or something and was like, bam, bam, bam on the floor where our feet are and it was measured and it was timed and it was it wasn't just like a erratic bang it was a very like intentional type of bang like someone was down there with a broomstick or something like you would do if you live in an apartment and the people upstairs are making noise and you bang on it it was like that but so much so it wasn't just the sound you literally felt your feet vibrate with the each bang and so we're all sitting there blah 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 talking and it just shut us up and we just sat there and looked at each other and we're like what was that and we just sat there in astonishment and just stared at each other and there was no way we could determine what it was it didn't happen again it had never happened before or since that experience it wasn't just like a tree hitting it you know the building or something like that it was a measured planned out bang so timed so it was like you know one bang a second one bang a second and then another bang it wasn't erratic as if it had been caused by nature it felt and you felt 
the floor vibrate underneath your feet. So that's one experience that I had. Um, moving on to another experience. I was in my late 20s and I had traveled to England with two friends of mine and we had arrived in London, flew into Heathrow and we were staying with a mutual friend in London. And we got to the house and it were two vacant bedrooms that we were allowed to use. We we're exhausted and jet lagged as you are when you travel internationally and we asked the hostess that we we're staying with if we could sleep. That's the first thing we want to do is sleep. And my friend that I'm traveling with, she's like, all right, we're, we're sleeping for two hours. We're getting up. We're going. We're seeing the town. She's like, we're not going to sleep. We're getting up. We're taking a nap. And I'm going to set an alarm so that we don't sleep past this alarm. And so we're like, yeah, okay, whatever. So we all go to sleep. And I slept in my own room. And then they were a couple, my friend and her boyfriend, and they slept in the other room. And so I am a an extremely light sleeper. I wake up with everything. Like if someone touches the doorknob on my closed door, I wake up. It's a terrible affliction. I hate it. I don't want to be a light sleeper, but hey, I can't help it, right? It's just the way I am. Um, and I'll mention that I'm not the type of person that wakes up groggy. I wake up immediately. When I wake up, when I get woken up by every little noise that happens, I'm awake 100%. I'm never like, oh, I think I heard. No, it's like I'm 100% awake. I got woken up because I had, I had kind of sensed my friend was standing in the doorway. The bed that I was laying in was parallel to the door. So when I, lay, when I laid in it, I could look out the door, um, the entrance to the room. And so I woke up because again, I'm a really light sleeper and someone being there or the sense of someone being there would wake me up out of my sleep. And I woke up because I sensed someone standing there watching me sleep. And so I woke up, but I didn't open my eyes because I thought it was my friend and I was like, oh crap, I'm so tired. Here she is to wake me up so we can go and do touristy stuff. And I really don't want to, I just want to sleep. And so I woke up, but I kept my eyes shut and I thought if I keep, if I act like I'm still asleep, she'll go away. So I sensed her standing there watching me sleep and I thought, okay, she's going to wake me up now. Maybe if I just, you know, keep my eyes closed. So eventually I didn't feel her presence and she went away. So then... Um, I fell back asleep and I don't know how much time had passed, but a little bit later I felt a cat jump on the bed um, You know, I felt them walk around, you know, cats will like walk around or dogs do it too But you know how animals walk around in a circle to try to find the perfect spot to lay in And then I felt the cat walk around in a circle in a perfect spot and then kind of like Squish down and find that you know get snuggled up into the blankets and decide that that was a spot They wanted to lay in and again I was woken up by it by the cat jumping on the bed But I didn't open my eyes because I was so exhausted that I just laid there with my eyes closed and thought oh They have a cat it just jumped on the bed. That's cool. Whatever. I like cats Once I felt it walk around and snuggle up on the bed I thought oh, they have a cat. Let me let me see this cat and pet it or something So I sat up and I look and there's no cat there's nothing on the bed and I distinctly felt it. It wasn't like I was half asleep. It wasn't like I, like I said, I'm a very light sleeper and I wake up zero to a hundred within, you know, the first few seconds of waking up. So it wasn't like I was half asleep or dreaming. It was like I felt the cat jump on the bed and I woke up and then I felt it move around on the bed. And then when I sat up to look, it wasn't there. So flash forward, you know, a couple hours or however long it passed. I went, I got up and I went into my friend's room and I woke her because I guess she had slept through the alarm or whatever. I, and I, you know, had remembered that she had come in. So I woke her and I said, you know, we're supposed to wake up. We're not, we slept for three hours. We were only supposed to sleep for two. And she's like, oh, okay. And I said, you know, hey, did you get up early? You got up earlier though. And you tried to wake me and you were, you were going to come wake me. And she said, no, I didn't. And I said, wait, but I, I heard you, I felt you come in the room and watch me. And she said, no, I didn't. I've been sleeping the whole time. And I said, did you get up to go to the bathroom? And she's like, no. And I asked her if her boyfriend had got up to go to the bathroom. And she's like, no, he's been sleeping here the whole time. And so I'm like, that, well, that's weird. And then later on, when we were all together with the housemates and the people that lived, it actually lived in the home. And I said something like, yeah, your cat, I think it jumped up on the bed. And they're like, we don't have a cat. And so I, I don't remember at that time if I told them the story or if I thought, okay, that's weird. I don't want them to think I'm, I'm crazy or whatever. I'm not going to say anything. But those two, I fully, up until the point that I got up and spoke to my friend, thought my friend had come in the room and still had maybe thought that the cat had jumped up on the bed and then left. Um, but there was my friend had not I've never gotten up and came to look at me and there was no cat. Flash forward. 
The house that I lived in before this house was built in 1926, which, you know, again, going back to being in Southern California, that's a still a pretty old house for this area. And so um, it wasn't, I lived there for four years and it wasn't haunted to the point where like I felt scared or unsafe or weird crazy things would happen. It just was, you never really felt alone and I talked to other people and they said they had the same experience and I asked them like, did you feel anything while you're here? And they said, yeah, you know, I kind of feel like you're not alone. I kind of feel like there's someone there with you, but not like someone watching you in a creepy way or anything like that. It was never like that. It was just that there was maybe someone else in the house with you when you were alone. So I never, it never really bothered me. Um, but having other people, several other people confirm it then made me think like, all right, this is legit. Something that would happen, um, it happened to me several times, maybe two or three times, was that, okay, so you know on, on Apple, I have an Apple computer, and you know when you go to turn up the volume on the computer, it makes like a pop sound. So when you go to push the button to turn it up or down, it, it makes like a pop sound. And I would be, so the house was, it was a small house. It was only like 900 square feet, two bedrooms. And it had a bedroom on each end of the hallway and then like a short hallway and then a bathroom on what a door to the bathroom and then a door to the living room. And the guest bedroom is where I kept, the second bedroom is where I kept the computer. So it was like my office slash guest bedroom area. A couple of times I'd be walking down the hallway and I would hear the volume button on my computer. No one was home, I was home alone. And I would hear the volume button on my computer go like pop 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 and I, I would I would stop in my tracks and be like what and, and this wasn't like a big house where you know I was on the other side of the house and I'm like I think I heard no it was like I was walking down the hallway and I heard the sound of my computer volume being turned up or down and I'm home alone and so I would go in the room and look and no one, my cats weren't in there at the time. I don't have cats anymore, but at the time I had cats. Um, I, I didn't have any cats that were like walking on the, com you know, on the computer uh, or anything like that. It just kind of freaked me out a little bit, but it wasn't anything that would happen like so regularly that it would, it scared me. It just kind of stopped me in my tracks where I was like, whoa, that's weird. The other experience I had in that house was, and this is the last story I'm going to tell. I woke up in the morning to take a shower to get ready for work, and I have one of those shower caddies in the corner of the shower with the big long pole that goes from the ceiling to the floor and it has the shelving units that you put all of your stuff your products in and the way it's it's um, the one that I have is slotted so the shelves that are attached to the pole are slotted and they're about one or let's see two to three inches high and then you put your products in and in order for the products to fall they have to either topple or like be elevated up out of the shelving unit. They can't fall through the slotted things because it's too small. So um, the slots between are too small. So I came into the shower and there was a bunch of my products including my razor and you know razor, my razor is shaped like a T so I put it on the shelf and in order for it, it can't slip through the, um, the slots because it would get caught on the T part. So, um, I hope I'm being clear here, but like, you know, let's say there's slots and you want something you can't, if it's shit like this, it's not going to go through the slots. It's going to stop itself. Right? So I go into the shower and I pull the shower curtain back and I look and there's uh, products on the, on the ground. And I think, well, that's weird. You know, how do these, I don't, I was like, that's odd. These, how do these get out of the shelves in order to get up off these shelves? They have to be lifted up over the elevated little like slotted area you know of the shelf the like lip of the shelf to fall on the ground so I'm like well that's odd so I pick them up and I put them back <clears throat> and then I get in the shower and I close my eyes to wash my hair and you know get my hair wet and I lean back into the water and my eyes are closed and I hear clink clink and I look and my razor was on the ground in front of me on the floor again and I'm like wait a minute this is weird because there's no way that it could just slip out off the shelf. It had to have been elevated up over the shelf and down onto the ground. Like it was just weird. So I pick it up and I put it back and I go about my business. And again, I close my eyes and I go back to what I'm doing. And I don't think at this time I thought it was anything. I thought it was just coincidence and I had just slipped out, whatever. So I go and I go back to washing my hair and I hear clink, clink. And I look and it's my razor again on the ground. And I'm like, Okay, and at this point, I'm like, there's like a mischievous spirit, you know, playing a joke on me. So I picked up my razor and I said out loud, I said, stop it. Stop playing with me. I'm trying to get ready for work and I'm time for this. And I put it back 
and it didn't fall again. I went back to washing my hair and washing my face and everything, and the razor didn't fall again. So um, the fact that I told the spirit to stop and then it did, it was just, it was just weird. Um, and I don't remember feeling like scared or anything. Like I said, the spirit that was in this house, it was more of a presence you felt you weren't afraid of it. It just kind of was there. And it didn't, I don't, I didn't have a lot, I didn't have other experiences in this home, so it wasn't like a mean spirit that I thought was trying to cut me with a razor or anything crazy like that. I just think it was trying to play a trick on me. Um, so those are my personal paranormal experiences, and I did this in um, honor of it being Halloween, and I wanted to share these stories because I thought maybe you guys might be interested. So if you like my video, go ahead and like and subscribe, and you'll see more from me later. Okay, thanks. Bye.